Hello, trusting you are all well. My name is Treasure and I'm going to be taking you through some end user computing. Uh, just took a decision to do this because of the lockdown and being a part-time lecturer, I know that some of you may be struggling with your assignments or with trying to understand the basics of what many institutions may call end user computing or introduction to computers. So I'll be doing short clips um, for you to just go through them and be able to understand. And of course, I'm going to load them in the channel called Unlimited Treasure that you can subscribe to and we can be in touch. And I'm willing to ask this to with your assignments and exam preps for those who have. For now, I'm just focusing on introduction to computers. Uh, let's see what else you can do as a part-time lecturer for now over three years lecturing most of the working students who come on weekends and we take them through a lot of these courses. My focus is more in the IT space, informatics, information and technology management, automation, all IT related subjects basically. So for this course, let's focus on this and let's engage. Uh, feel free to ask questions and let's see how we can assist, right? So basically, you you have to understand what a computer is and what are the types of computers, and you're gonna keep on getting in more and more, right? So, what is a computer? Is an electronic device that you can use to basically input output. So it's input, process, and output. So anything that you can think about that can do that for you is a computer. So there are many examples that you can think about. The examples being um, your smartphone is one of them. You need to understand that it, it can process and do all this great stuff. A smartphone, not any kind of phone. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of them, being the personal computers, the laptop, you know them. Um, and for now, when we do introduction to computers, for now, it's, it's good to still just imagine the traditional desktop that you've seen before that has a box and a screen and a keyboard. So for now, visualize that. Of course, I know that many of you use a laptop. So some of the things when I explain them just also have a context of how a personal computer looks like, how a desktop looks like. Back in the days when we were studying these things, we had to learn how to open this box, know where, what is, and all that. So have that perspective. You may have your laptop, you know what a laptop is. For a person who is studying, it's important to always know how to explain these things because your exams may, may have multiple choice where you need to understand what is a laptop and what is not a laptop what is a certain kind of com or computer and what is not so yeah as a student go through your books understand the definitions of things and all that is around whatever you're trying to describe right your handheld devices your smartphones that i've already spoken to multimedia players like your ipod is a type of computer you've got your network computers if you're working you know more about this server it serves basically you can con you can connect a couple of computers to one you don't need to have a lot of boxes and i know right now in our houses you find that people bought five different laptops and they don't use one box you can just save everything but you can save by doing that <clears throat> uh your mainframe supercomputers i guess in these days it's up to you i mean we can make our own supercomputers as fast as you want it because we know what makes a great computer but back in the days of course you could um call something a supercomputer and go buy it but if you know how what makes a computer powerful which we'll touch on later on then you can make your own right so that is it types of computers you can pause and and reflect on that um and of course feel free to ask questions um on the clip we're still on unlimited treasure do subscribe
uh, ask questions. The importance of subscribing is that when I load other clips, because I don't want to make them really long and boring, then you are able to see when I've loaded a new clip. I'm happy to access, like I said, so let's go for it. Um, <clears throat> main parts of a PC, like I've said, let's try and imagine that desktop, right? So uh, let's go through that. So main parts of your PC, you can think of your keyboard, your mouse, uh, case, speakers, modems, you know them. But what becomes important, guys, for your exams, for your assignment, is how to define. In the world of academic writing and academic learning, it is very important. Let me say this. I normally teach academic writing, and this becomes very important for all the students. The, the departing point of everything in academics is defining it. If you can't define it, don't talk about it. Actually, don't talk about it before you define it. It's as simple as that. If it is in an assignment, then you will quote a, a person who said it. It's not only about quoting your reference. You know Harvard referencing. You define, but you will say according to Treasure and Label 2010, page 58, uh, a computer is defined as right but in an if you're writing in that's an assignment way of writing but then if you are in an exam you don't have to quote an, an author you just have to define it the way you can that's the difference but our departing point always is to be able to define and say whatever the description you can say around a thing so please learn to do that please always learn to do that whether you asked or not right <clears throat> You know what a keyboard is, you to enter information, a mouse, different types of mouse that you guys use, and all that. Hard disk drive, you know, there's internal and external, and floppy disk. I still put floppy disk in my presentations because it's important for you to know the history. If you do define it uh, as in a way of storage, then know how to define it well as well. It's fine, you can include it. <clears throat> then we do have the CDs, the DVDs, and all those. Starting a computer. Uh, before we get into starting the computer, uh, you can pause and think about what we just did. Those parts of a computer, you understand them or pop me a question. All right. Not a problem. Try to cover a lot in a short space of time. So what is very important about studying the computer, guys, I'm just going to say this. I know most of you come from this generation where you just get a laptop from work. And laptops these days don't even have some CDs, a CD drive, right? So <laughs> it's, it's very easy for you not to know. But should we have a laptop or a computer at home that has a CD drive or has a floppy disk drive, some sort of removable media, basically. It is important for you to know that a, a computer boots from, from an external media. So please do make sure that every time when you start your computer, there's nothing inside. Otherwise, you're gonna see that black screen and <laughs> You're going to take it to someone and they'll charge you. You may live it there for a day or a couple of hours and they'll still charge you a couple of hundreds or thousands just because you didn't decide, you didn't know rather to, to, that you must remove your removable media. So that's very important. Otherwise, it's going to, no matter how many times you, you restart it, you still, it will still go back to the same place. Okay, so... That is what is very important, otherwise you're going to pay, right? Um, now let's talk hardware and software high level. Hardware is the things that you can, the physical components basically, most of them you can see them. Software is the sort of instructions that are sent to your computer, right? It's important for you to know that as an introduction to computers. So let's go now to input device. Right. I want to teach you more about input devices. And I've seen a lot of students being being confused about input devices. If you are thinking of an input device like a something that is a storage media, uh, normally in class I say what are examples of input devices and people will say USB. 
it's all right. I, I haven't had a class that no one thought so. It's all right. If you if its purpose is to store, then don't put it under input devices. All right. So the ones that I mentioned, the like keyboard, mouse, trackboard, get a microphone, and sometimes people will say, but you hear people. A microphone, people talk about microphone and you hear them, guys, you speak into the microphone as an input and you hear the output from the speakers, right? So just because people are speaking on a microphone, check and check the mic one, two, doesn't mean that a microphone is an output device, okay? Just think about it. Pretty much easy. If you have questions, you ask. So those are just some pictures for you to visualize if you don't know what it is and some high level explanation. Go through your books, understand these, ask questions, and I'm happy to assist. You ask questions right here on Unlimited Treasure Channel. And let's assist you. Okay. <clears throat> Take a break and we're gonna get into output device. So output devices are those devices again, guys. Before you say what, it, before you try and give an examples of output devices, try and explain it. When you're going through your assignments, I cannot repeat this enough. Always define it. Always define it. If it's an in, in an assignment, you have a reference it. And then you can come with examples. Don't just come and say output device examples. No, guys, we're no longer in high school. You define it, you introduce it right, and then you talk about it. If it's an essay, which means more than 10 marks questions, your flow becomes very important. You intro introduction, you intro it, then the body, the conclusion. You don't have to write intro body confusion. You just have to flow properly for us to see that we're introdu introducing and you were getting into the crux of the matter and then we're concluding, all right? So if you can learn to flow in an essay manner, in a way of telling a story, you learn it now. I know this is mostly for first years, and but you learn that now you will not struggle anyway. The reason most people still give up on their thesis at master's and PhD level Sometimes it's because they don't they don't practice the simple things early enough, right? It it does not get any easier. And at that level, you're gonna have the supervisor who's just gonna give you this feedback and you feel like you're worthless. Sometimes it feels like that. Then it's either you're gonna keep trying and then give up or you keep going. But if you learn now, guys, I I really recommend that you start learning to define things and getting into the floor, right, Harvard referencing, you'll be right, you will be right. <clears throat> okay, so those are the output devices. Um, they just show you information, right? Uh, those are just some of the examples. And I'm not gonna get much into the ports. I want to talk accessibility now, one of the topics that every person needs to know about. I know that this is where people start thinking, is it access, access to what? But actually, this does not talk much to access. It's a very important discussion. I think different spaces should be discussing this. It refers to how much easier system is to be used by disabled people. Okay, so it is very important in the world of DNI, guys, that we understand that people with disabilities or people with limitations are equally smart, they can do things, and therefore we should make sure that things are working well for them. We should make sure that if it's an IT person and can code but just needs a bigger a, maybe a bigger keyboard or a different keyboard because they can't see properly, then they are allowed to do the work. If it's a matter of they can't see properly, then you give them what is necessary. If it means they can type but not with their hands because they don't have hands, then we give them 
the space to do that. It is very important. This I'm, I'm talking about in the context of IT, but it is relevant in every space, you know. Everyone who starts to build a building must be thinking, can a disabled person access this? You may have seen those errors in the lift, and sometimes you don't know what they are about, but it's because um, they must be able to touch those things if they can't see and be able to go to the floor that they have to go to. The steps, if their building has steps only, they didn't think accessibility. So I challenge all of you to go back to your workplaces or wherever you have access to really and see if you're doing something to make sure that we are creating a room for disabled people because they are equally smart and they can do this. We just need to enable them. That's accessibility. I'm very passionate about the subject. Again, if you want to talk more about it, let's chat on the Unlimited Treasure channel. Happy to respond, happy to assist. Okay. Okay. I don't want this to go for more than 20 minutes. <laughs> so time is important. Let's touch on storage. Okay. So storage, very important. Very important and also very important for backup. The backup, which is also very, very important, guys. I just want you to pause right now and think when was the last time you backed up? If if it was to happen, I don't know in the I mean the whole world, there's a lockdown and I don't expect anyone to be walking around with a laptop and it be taken from them, you know. But if it was a normal day anyway to work walk from work and someone steals your computer, would you be safe, you know? <clears throat> if you have a go live in a week or two or a day, would you be fine? You know? It's very important that we use storage to back up and that's why we have different types of storage. Um, which can be external hard drives, which can be the cloud. There is removable and non-removable storage, basically. These are some of the devices that you know about. And please, for academic purposes, you don't say USB and then say flash and then you say memory stick. It's the same thing, guys. Okay, we get through a lot when we mark and we have to see USB written three times in different ways and someone still wants the max. No, please. Let's understand that. So let's just understand also that there is removable and non-removable. Um, and the, the online file storage will be part of non-removable. I mean, of non-removable years. You see on the cloud, you know, when you have your phone, you don't want to lose your memorable pictures. You save them on the cloud. The same with the information. If you, I mean, you, all your companies have where you save stuff. And if you don't know, I, I mean, you are learning. You are going through this course so that you can do these things yourself. But for company purposes, if you still don't know how it's done in your company, if you don't know how often you back up, uh, go to your IT or call IT. The <laughs> the answer I get a lot in class is I call IT. This course is meant for you to not call IT anymore. And as you get your siblings and kids needing your assistance, needing computers, then you, ca you can't call IT for them. You are their IT. So learn how to do these things. You can pretty much set up your your devices, be it your phone or laptop, computers, to, to back up for you every after whatever time, whether it's monthly, which can be a long time, or every week or every three days, depending on what you do as well at work, please make sure that you back up, guys. Please, you don't want to be getting written warnings and dismissals because your laptop was stolen closer to, to go live and, and there was no information for continuity. Backup is very important. Use this. Uh, <clears throat> But again, it's also important, guys, as you buy some of these things, you buy them. And that's why I have this. I normally just get in class and ask people, would you go buy a terabyte for a thousand rand or 1024 megabytes? No. 10, would you buy 
a thousand gigabytes for 800 or a terabyte for a thousand rand and the answer i get mostly is it's a terabyte and i mean over 90 percent of the time that's the answer because people just know that a terabyte is bigger and even if i say would you rather buy a terabyte for 1.5 thousand rand or thousand gigabytes for a thousand rand people still say a terabyte but actually the what the question that i just said is the same thing i mean a thousand gigs is a terabyte but people would still spend more because the salesman said terabyte so it's very important that you learn these things as you go buy this uh, external hard drive or memory stick for yourself know what you buy as you go buy for your kids your siblings those close to you know what you buy because you don't want gonna the days where you just spend money for the sake of it's, it's not easy to get this money so have information and please have information before you buy so i think for now we've covered um, quite a few topics which which are very good i don't want to make this recording very long so for this session we'll end here Thank you for listening. Unlimited treasure. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Anyone you think uh, can develop or uh, can grow from this, can learn something from it, share with them. And let's inter keep interacting. Even kids, I don't know if it's a bit quicker for people who are younger or people who are very uh, new to computers, you let me know. I'm always willing to do those as well. I think for now, I'm just thinking of <clears throat> my students who are mostly working students, over 90%. If I ever do non-working students who are like very, very fresh from high school, it's really on request and few occasions, but I'm also thinking about you. So if you're also watching and you have questions because maybe I was faster somewhere, do feel free to ask and I'm happy to explain. Right. Guys, I care about you so much. I treasure you i want you to pass so study ask questions and let's go for it All right see you in the next clip subscribe I treasure you